Ah, uh, good people. Do you guys remember the good old times when a GPU launch was actually something to look forward to? You know, it wasn't that long ago when the card that AMD just announced was a pretty big deal and something to actually be excited about. Now with cryptocurrency mining and the scalpers finding ridiculous way to grab cards, you have all the right to be pissed off and so am I. And this situation isn't helping anyone, especially not gamers. Either way, neither AMD nor Nvidia can just sit around and wait for the demand to go under control. So both are releasing new GPUs that hopefully will spread out the demand and allow people to actually get some cards as more stock becomes available in 2021. But anyways, let's just get straight to the point. Everything we know about the RX 6700 XT that we can share with you today, some new cool announcements from AMD, and also um, why this might be the 6700 XT, like one of the most important AMD graphics card launches in a really, really long time. Show off the cool build and not the cables with the new Corsair 5000 series. Welcome the all new interior you'll appreciate for whatever build you desire without any hassle of cable management and appropriate cooling all around with proper dust filtration on all three models. Check it out below. All right, so let's put the bitterness aside that usually surrounds all the GPU launches and talk about why the 6700 XT is actually pretty exciting. This is the first time in what feels like forever that AMD is able to launch what looks like to be a full top to bottom lineup with brand new architecture. The last time this happened was not with the 5000 series, it was not with Vega, it was not with 500 or the 400 series rebrands, maybe Fury? No, no with Fury. Even then, some were just rebrands of previous generation. So you would have to go back to 2012 when the original GCN1 came out and the HD 7000 series. So yeah, this is a really big deal, provided that AMD can actually follow through with the more affordable lineup on the lower end uh, SKUs. And hopefully this allows the, the whole market to be a little bit more saturated than it is today. But what's the 6700 XT is all about? Well, instead of using the Navi 21 core from the higher end GPUs, it uses a smaller, more efficient and easier to produce Navi 22 core. That easier to produce part is really important since it technically allows AMD to produce more of them and release hopefully more cards into the channels. Now specs wise, that smaller core also leads to only 40 compute units. And if AMD is using the same layout as the larger dies, that means it'll get 2560 stream processing. On paper, that seems to be a pretty major cutdown versus the RX 6800, but the 6700 XT is supposed to run at much, much higher clock speeds that hopefully will bridge that performance gap uh, within the tiers of the GPUs. Oh, and also you should know that while it will support smart access memory, the 6700 series will not have rage mode. It also has access to 12 gigs of GDDR6 operating on a 192 bit wide memory bus. And while AMD did not really say anything about the speeds, we'd expect it to run at the same 16 gigabits per second as the 6800 series. But man, AMD's memory sizes are making Nvidia's 10 and 8 gigabytes look pretty bad, especially on paper. Another interesting thing is that 96 megabytes bytes, the infinity cache doesn't get cut down uh, as everything else, and that should help make up for the narrower interface. And even though it has a lot less compute units than the RX 6800, the high core clocks mean pretty similar power consumption. So compared to Nvidia cards, the power consumption will probably be right in line with the RTX 3070. Also, it looks like AMD is targeting this card at that high refresh rate 1440p space, so exactly competing with the RTX 3070. So I guess that's a good time to start talking about pricing and when it will be available because the RX 6700 XT will start at $480 and go upwards from there. The made by AMD will be an exclusive to the AMD.com store starting on March 18th. And that's the same day you'll start seeing board partner revisions start popping up at retailers. So get those refresh rate buttons ready. As for reviews, we're allowed to publish them on March 17th. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for those. And at least you can see the benchmarks before being able to to attempt to buy one. Now take this next thing with a huge grain of salt, but AMD told us they'll be regularly restocking the 6700 XT reference designs on AMD.com. So that's good news, especially given that we are expected to have much higher volumes than before. And we've also seen their store restock the RX 6800 more regularly than sites like Newegg, but maybe it's not as popular. Who knows? Now, according to AMD's very selective benchmarks, they're going to be offering RTX 3070 performance levels for about $20 less. And yeah, a lot of games in here are handpicked since Radeon cards traditionally do well in them. Also, these numbers are with smart access memory enabled and whatever API does best 
for that game for each GPU. So one could be running DX11, another could be DX12, you get the idea. This is an AMD presentation. What else can we expect? They also showed us some performance against the RTX 2080 Super and the GTX 1070 Ti as a sort of a upgrade path. I can maybe see 1070 owners thinking about upgrading, but if you're a 2080 Super owner, no chance. You're probably thinking of doing this upgrade thing every 18 months or so in the current GPU market. Even if I was running a GTX 1070, I'd think about holding on to that a little longer. Now, there wasn't much said about the reference card design, but uh, it will use an eight plus six pin layout for power, and it's about 10 and a half inches long with a dual slot heatsink. One bit of bad news is that AMD removed the USB-C port that's found on the higher end cards since they don't figure the 6700 XT is going to be used for VR. I don't understand this omission simply because this USB-C port gives you high bandwidth for external storage and is always a benefit regardless if you're trying to target VR gamers or not. And board partners will have their own usual selection of cards that range from these nice compact to ridiculously huge and ugly, but at least there's something for everyone. All right, so that's the GPU. There are also a few more small announcements. So first of all, AMD is rolling out support for smart access memory on Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, but only when they're installed on a 500 series motherboard. They would not give us timelines regardless of how much we pressed on the official support on the 400 series chip Sets, and it feels like they're just sticking to their whole, it needs PCIe Gen 4 story, even though that's been proven wrong. I guess it's a matter of validation and AMD's letting their uh, motherboard partners handle that whole validation on older chipsets. Another thing people have been asking for is Radeon anti-lag latency reducing feature to be rolled out into more APIs and that's finally happening. Yes, so it'll soon be compatible with DX12 games. And motion adaptive variable rate shading will be coming to DX12 titles as well and it'll be interesting to see how that stacks up to Nvidia's DLSS. But more on that in a future video. And finally, there was this little nugget that was hinted at CES but confirmed here. And that is we'll hopefully start seeing laptops laptops with RX 6000 series GPUs in the first half of the year. I really hope that they will turn out better than what Eber looked at with the RX 5000 series because that was just a disappointment. What AMD really needs to do here is get those parts into better designs than what Dell offered. But at least it's something else to look forward to. All right, so that wraps up this conversation until we can show you actual benchmarks of the RX 6700 XT. But either way, it's obvious that this GPU is going to be really important for AMD, probably the most important GPU launch of this year for them. Everyone is counting on their availability promise and they will be a huge win if they can actually deliver. The biggest winner will be the company that will get a steady supply of GPUs into gamers' hands. And I mean, it looks like the 6700 XT is approaching that uh, that space and hopefully we're not wrong. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Let me know what you think of this announcement. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you in the next video.